The programming language that I use in my course, C Sharp, is what's known as an event-driven programming language. Therefore, one of the most important things that I do need to discuss are called events. Now, an event is something actually really straightforward. It's something that happens. For example, when I click a button on my keyboard, when I move my mouse, when I click my mouse, when I type a character, all of these are something happening. And an event can trigger on these events and then tell the computer to run a specific function or method when that happens. So I could say, for example, when I move my mouse, create an image of a mouse cursor on the screen that then moves in the same direction as I've moved my mouse. That's actually how a mouse cursor moves. There's a piece of code which is connected to that arrow that you see on the screen. And another piece of programming code looks at the mouse that you have on your desk. And every time you make a movement, it fires an event that says, can you please update the position of the pointer, please? Methods um, and functions, as I've said in an earlier video, are kind of interchangeable. But generally, an event doesn't return a value. An event just fires and lets that piece of code run. Now, in reality, all computer programs, whether they be event-driven, object-orientated, or procedural, work in the same way to a computer. The one difference between event-driven programming, say, and procedural programming is that something called the event loop has been made for you. The event loop is the most important part of an event-driven program. It's a, an engine, if you like, for the, for the program to run. And what the event loop does is it has a list of all the different events that have been set up within your program. And the computer program goes through each event in turn and asks whatever that event is, has it happened yet? So say you've got a, a keyboard press, a mouse move and a mouse click event. It'll ask the keyboard, has a button been pressed yet? If the answer is no, it moves on. Has the mouse been moved yet? No. Move on. Has the mouse been clicked yet? No. OK, go back to the top. And it carries on going round and round this loop over and over again until finally something happens. Yes, a key has been pressed. Fantastic. What the program then does, it finds in a second loop a list of all the different functions and methods that need to run whenever a key is pressed. And it will then run through all of those one after the other and then return back to the next item in the event loop. Now has a mouse been moved? Now has a mouse been clicked? No, back to the top. Has a key been pressed? That concept is the most important concept in event-driven program that you'll need to do as part of your course here.